injured his, he had a lower body. I'll, I'll use a hockey. He had a lower <laughs> body injury uh, that prevented him from playing last week, but he's fine. He tried to go and practice and really wasn't able to, and he really wanted to push through, but just uh, we're excited to have him back. We're glad we were able to win without him. Uh, but as you guys saw, he, uh, he has a bright future. We're looking forward to him playing this week. Talk about, talk about just going against Drew Locke and what he presents. Yeah, you know, they're, they're playing with a lot of confidence. They've won their last three games. You know, you watch the, you know, the UConn and Idaho and Florida games, and, you know, they, they play with great tempo. He has a good feel for the offense. It almost looks like a different team that was playing at the beginning of the year. You know, we put on the Purdue game, and then we put on the cut-ups, and this is a different team. They're playing with confidence. You know, he, Hall, Moore, Johnson, the tight ends, the backs, they're all in sync. They play fast. We learned that last year. I mean, they gave up a ton of yards. They gave, you know, they ran 120 snaps against us last year. You know, so today, everything we do, we have to do a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. You know, we, we call it post-snap effort. You know, we gotta get, gotta get up, get our eyes to the sideline, get the signal, get lined up correctly. You know, it's, the analogy I use today is the plays themselves are pretty simple, you know, but the, the tempo that they go is really kind of warp speed. So it's like someone giving you an elementary math problem, but asking you really quickly. You're like, what'd you say? And it, it makes you a little bit hesitant right there. So, but the guys did a good job today, and, and I think they're obviously Saturday was a little bit of a confidence builder. You know, we've, we've played fairly consistently, but to, to come through and get a couple takeaways, a couple sacks at the end to finish the game up right was very, very positive. And, and, uh, and it, the challenge was to play with juice last week, and they did. And we talked about changing the narrative, changing the last chapters of this, this Team 121, and that was a good start. How difficult is it to get pressure on, on Locke in, in the backfield with the wide splits that they run? It's hard. I mean, it's hard to blitz because they they see it coming. You have to kind of alter some of your blitzes and bits paths. And really, they, they don't run a lot of down the field routes. They do and they don't. I mean, it's a, it's all based off RPOs, run pass options. So there's within the framework of a huddle call, there's you know two or three potential plays based on what we do. And if you stay in a static look, they'll run the run. If you rotate and blitz one way, he'll throw a pass one direction. If you rotate and blitz another way, he throws a pass another direction. And the receivers, I really don't think, are even taught to stock block. Their splits uh, take secondary players out of the run, run game fits. And then just off that, uh, based on the rotations and the blitzes and things like that, Locke's so adept at reading very, very simple keys that you know the second you start to rotate, he'll pull the ball out and throw it, throw it to the right spot. He's almost like a, a point guard in basketball distributing the ball. He's very, very good at it. Have you talked in the offseason about last year how you knew you could give up maybe this many points yeah. a game because you, know, you get guys like Dobbs and some of those guys on offense, you know that they, you know, the offense could put up points. Are you having a game plan and maybe call games differently because this offense isn't putting up as well, the same kind of numbers? It's just a different team. It's not this offense or that offense. This is Team 121. That was Team 120. And, you know, I think Larry and the guys are feeling some of the same heat that we felt last year with injuries and things like that. To suit up five or six offensive linemen, to be down to a true freshman quarterback, to have your top three or four wide receivers injured like they do. I thought the job that Larry did managing the game and Will McBride did stepping in under those circumstances was just outstanding. And, and John and the runners did a good job. And, and you do what you need to do to score one more point than the opponent. And last year, like I said, to answer that question, yes, when you got to Kentucky, when you got to the Missouri game, I knew that we were down on defense, and it. Had, we'll do Coach Scott over here. And it, we could give up 28 points, and still Josh Dobbs and Alvin Kamara and Josh Malone and that group of guys were going to score 35 to 42 points. Hell, we gave up 700 yards against these guys last year and 120 snaps and won by five touchdowns. I mean, so, you know, but this year's a different team, and certainly we have we know that, uh, you know, we know that we have to play things a little bit more aggressively and hold them to a little lesser number than we did last year. The turnovers. It's been good. Yeah, that's been positive. I mean, we we always emphasize it, but we've really taken it to the next step with regard to emphasizing it. And to have what do we have? Eight in the last three games, mm -hmm. including a touchdown. And and this week, I thought the key was the offense capitalizing on both of them and scoring touchdowns instead of field goals. And I think Larry would say the same thing. You know, Emmanuel had one, and and uh, Daryl Taylor. We're glad to have him back. He made an impact on the game and had a strip sack and Rashawn Gold. It seems like it's the same names all the time. And uh, those guys have really emerged as playmakers. But that's coach calls it complimentary football, and that was complimentary football. We took the ball away. Well, first of all, it starts with a good kickoff or a good punt. You know, Medley kicks five touchbacks, or uh, Trevor Daniel, who in my opinion is the best punter in the country, you know, pins him back inside the 10-yard line. And, and we get a takeaway, and the offense punches it in. That's a real darn good formula for success. And you talk about emphasizing them. I mean, are there things you can work on? Yeah, oh, yeah, we do all the time. We, uh, you know, we certainly, like every other team in the country, we do ball drills. But we do uh, – 
we do a, do a period every week called a maximum period where it's either tackling or hunt the ball. We use the term HTV, hunt the ball. And we do uh, various stripping drills, you know, what we call hammer and rake, pin and punch, uh, strip sack, you know, pin and pry, things along those lines. And we emphasize proper fumble recovery techniques with regard to scoop and score, with regard to a ground recovery. You know, we did even leave a couple on the ground on the, you know, we, we really had a couple opportunities that we didn't take advantage of. I think Emmanuel Mosley would even admit he had another interception right in his hands. You know, and we thought maybe there were a couple other ones that we could have had. So, you know, that's those are the difference between being four and five and being seven and two. That one play here, that one play there. And if we can continue to do that over these next few weeks, that's that'll be positive. What are we seeing out of Nigel Warrior?